Welcome back, cozy friends, and welcome in if you are new. My name is Elle Serene, and today I will be taking you on a full tour of my completed valley in Disney Dreamlight Valley. This has been one year in the making and over 500 hours of playtime and decorating. Cozy up with me and I'll show you what it's like to walk through my valley every day. Before we jump in, make sure to cozy tap that like and subscribe button for more decorating inspo. Please feel free to comment your thoughts on my valley throughout the video. Beginning in the plaza, this is my rustic cottage core centerfold with the clock towers and L-shaped benches. We have the cute barrel items and crates to really give this area that cottage core feel. To the right of the plaza, we have Scrooge's shop, which is also cottage core inspired with the windy path outlined with the birch bushes. There are some elegant themed items in this area too, like the Mickey statue and the piano. I have also included a painting area with Rapunzel's easel and crafting table here. The potions are makeshift paints and this makes for a cute little filler area. Let's make our way back to the left side of the plaza. I have created a garden sitting area with the fairy tale gazebo. My favorite part of this small build is the view of Mickey's house through the gazebo, as well as the view of my vintage cottagecore village through the gazebo, which I will showcase soon. I've created a path near the exit to the meadow and sunlit plateau with a cute little flower market. Now I will show you my cottagecore village. I wanted to encompass a vintage cottagecore village design here, very much inspired by Belle's provincial town before meeting Beast at his castle. In the town, we have rustic tables for a cafe feel. I also updated the old Monsters Inc. apartment to the new one, and I was so happy to see how well it fits here. There are sitting areas on each side, and I feel like it all flows well together when running back to the garden gazebo area. Welcome to the Forest of Valor. We will start in my garden courtyard behind my house and storage area. I went for an elegant aesthetic here using the Beauty and the Beast fountain and placing down flowers to surround the area. I opted for the frozen willow trees to add an ethereal vibe to it. Continuing to my main house, we have a cottage core garden and storage area. I made my own designs of small gardens using the leafy bordered path. I added some barrels, flower pots, pumpkins, and the natural forming mushroom stumps to add to the small garden designs. This is where I hoard everything. I prefer outside storages, but I've seen some really cute inside ones. I made use of the trellis item here and added some simple small details of a sitting area with books and a latte. I've also organized and labeled my storage boxes to make it easy to find what items I'm looking for. Heading to the front of my house, I wanted to continue the garden vibe, so I went with a natural look, incorporating the mush dumps and the Forest of Valor foliage. left of my house, I have a more soft cottage core aesthetic with pinks and yellows. This is my tea area. As you can see, we have Mrs. Potts and the cherry blossom trees with pink flowers to really bring this build together. At 
At the back of the build, it connects to my storage area for easy access, and I created another painting area here. You will see quite a few of these in my valley as I do paint in real life. I was really happy about the placement near the river as I feel as though I am deep in a forest and it just adds to the overgrown look. I also was really proud with the view of the castle in the background while sitting and enjoying tea. Next up is the Beauty and the Beast castle design. I placed it across the drawbridge and created an elegant themed courtyard of roses. I included the pillars, candelabras, and stone statues. The enchanted rose is the centerpiece and to transition out of the garden, we have two gazebos on each side. I created a small path in front of the castle to showcase Beast's conservatory and the date night furniture. At the back of the castle, we have an outdoor library for Belle. I just feel so cozy here. Continuing on, we have a nice view of both cottage designs across the river. And across the rock bridge, we have Rapunzel's tower. I made use of the purple sinister trees, butterfly flowers, and lined her pathway with the magical flower from her lore. Finally, we have the mushroom house design. This is an autumn theme build. I did section off this house with the vine wall rotated as it didn't quite fit the color palette of the rest of the forest. And I used the sunlit plateau floral bushes and yellow, orange, and red flowers to match the color palette here. To the right of the mushroom house, I placed down Goofy's stall and made this a natural overgrown aesthetic. Now we are headed to the peaceful meadows. There are different aesthetics in this biome, but it is mostly cottage core. Starting at the grand staircase, we have my autumn themed cottagecore market centerfold. I created a windy path with pumpkins, a scarecrow centerpiece, complete with hay bales and apples. This was one of my first market designs in the game. If we head to the left of the market, we have Goofy's house, continuing the cottage core theme. I've placed two pumpkin gardens on each side of his house to continue my unhealthy obsession of buying everything at Scrooge's shop. I added the blueberry bushes to fit Goofy's color palette, and I also created a wraparound path of the pond. Continuing on to the right side of the meadows, I created Mickey's farm core area. This is the bulk of where I get my ingredients for cooking and for making money. It is a functional farm plot design that is fully decorated. So we have a picnic blanket, barrels, hay bales, and florals that match Mickey's color palette.
finally, as I head back towards our fountain in this area, we have our last design in the Peaceful Meadows, which is the Fairy Blast Home. This house is so beautiful and I felt as though it fit the meadow quite well. I created a windy path with the vine lamps and different foliage elements. I also added in some other floral lights and flowers to achieve an ethereal flower fairy aesthetic. I have a stepping stone path that wraps around the house to stay practical so that I can still access the mining nodes nearby. Next, we will be visiting my glade. My glade is very much fairy core inspired. I created a fairy circle around the tree near my fountain with the new seed items from Eternity Isle. I kept it really simple, decorating around Mother Gothel's tree. As we continue across the bridge, we have my first ever build, which is Minnie's house. I created a mystical orchard and sitting area for her, which is consistent with her color palette. I used the purple birch bushes and butterfly flowers to create a windy path. And then to the left of the orchard, I created a little area for her to sell the cherries she grows, and that path also leads to Goofy's stall. As a filler area, I built a path encompassed by the mossy trees with a lot of fairy core like foliage. This is a transition area between Minnie and Vanilla Bee's houses. Moving on, we have Vanilla Bee's racetrack, which was featured on the official Dreamlight Valley Instagram. I created a racetrack with the Tom Tool design. I will show you this build at night because it beautifully glows and adds to our fairy core theme here in the glade. And I couldn't resist showing you how I race around the track. <laughs> Next to Vanilla Bees, I created a Cinderella-inspired outdoor library. I used the white bookshelves, blue chaise lounge and sofas, fireplace, fairy lights, and Cinderella carriage to create this design. If you are looking to recreate any of these designs, most of the speed builds are uploaded on my channel and some of them I did create on stream, which are also on my channel. Finally, the last design is my theme park. I will be showcasing this at night as it is so beautiful all lit up. This is also where my multiplayer portal is, so if you have ever visited my valley, this is where you enter. I tried my best to embody a theme park aesthetic that was consistent with the fairy core theme, and I was really happy with how cute it turned out. I love the teacup ride and the Ferris wheel. That concludes the Glade of Trust in my valley. Let's now head over to Dazzle Beach. I tried to make the beach look as natural as possible. I wanted to showcase as much sand as possible, but added tropical foliage where I could. There are multiple designs on Dazzle Beach, but a recent favorite is this cute design that I made for the bungalow house. I love the sitting area outside of the fence, and as we enter the yard, we have another cute sitting area and market with tropical vibes. A 
let's walk over to Ariel's. This is another aging build, and I just wanted to thank everyone who tagged me as inspo for this build. I used the golden brick road and the large glowing seashell for the focal point. It is very mermaid core, and I love the seating with the cute coral surrounding it. To the left of Ariel's, I created a small filler seating area with the pillar for Dazzle Beach. I also included some of the orchard trees that fit the color palette of Dazzle Beach. Next is the Ancient Runes, which was heavily inspired by Atlantis. I wanted a cute Atlantis-themed area that led to the cave. I also used the water tiles here and some various Atlantis-themed pillars and rocks to complete this design. It is time to visit Skull Rock. I made a water path here that includes reeds, lotus flowers, and cattails. I used the hammock and various other tropical elements to achieve an island look. I thought it would be cute to use Prince Eric's ship as a pirate ship in this area. I was hoping to see Skull Rock open up, but perhaps that will be next update. Let me know what you think in the comments. I wanted to showcase the rest of Dazzle Beach at sunset because it's just so gorgeous. As a filler design, I added in a bunch of the boat items, almost as if this is an active trading pier. Next, we have Donald's house, which I placed on the dock. I also included Goofy's stall here. Continuing on, we have Moana and Maui's homes next to each other. I thought it would be cute to place her at the end of the bridge and give her a cooking and sitting area. Now we'll make our way through our Zen Garden on Dazzle Beach. I chose the purple rocks from the Forgotten Lands and Zen Garden item for this area as it matches the staircase so well. Finally, we have Stitch's cute little house, tucked away in the corner, but still very much a tropical vibe. I also added in some cute umbrellas and tropical seating on the other side of the Zen Garden. Welcome to my Sunlit Plateau. This was the first area I designed with the pillar and goofy stall. My vision was a picnic table sitting area in a natural setting. I wanted to utilize the beautiful curving river and a lot of my designs are centered around complementing that. Let's move forward to Pride Rock. I used the Sunlit Plateau Meadowgrass to give a plains look here. I also added Nala's Waterfall. I kept it pretty simple with Scar's house, a lot of dead bushes and trees to showcase his house. Mirabelle's house is next and we did a somewhat tropical theme with the oasis pool. I created a courtyard for her with her house in the background. There's also a cute sitting area next to her house.
Next, we have Wally's garden and a diverging path to make it easy to walk around. I also gave him a gazebo with a little flower shop and I lined the background of his build with the waterfall items. Prince Eric's castle is next. This is a very regal build with the use of the topiaries and the red carpet. And then to the right of his castle, I made a nautical themed sitting area where I imagine he dreams up his next adventures on the seas. Finally, for a filler area, I created a little mining station funded by Scrooge to sort the raw gems and sell them. Next, let's head to my Forgotten Lands. I created a fairy core courtyard here for a fairy godmother, a light in the darkness of the Forgotten Lands. By adding the dreamlight trees and cherry blossom trees, it really switched up the vibe of this biome. I also placed Merlin's house next to hers with a cute pumpkin lined path that leads to Goofy's stall. And we have a wraparound little stepping stone path or transition area to get back to Fairy Godmother's house. To the right of Merlin's, we have a small sitting area next to his home with candy. I also created a small place for the haunted mansion here. The vibe is like a house on the corner to trick or treat at. Some of the views in the Forgotten Lands ended up being amazing. This is one of my favorites. Heading to the graveyard, it is at the back of the Nightmare Castle. I utilized the mud bordered path and Zero's house to make graves. Now let's take a look at the Nightmare Castle design. It is probably my favorite in the Forgotten Lands. The views are too good with Jack's infamous hill in the background. I also built around the pond and layered the pathing with pumpkins for Halloween. Finally, we have Jack Skellington's home. I made a makeshift path out of pumpkins and added his chair and Zero's house nearby. Our last biome to tour is the Frosted Heights. 
Let us first take a look at the ice castle, which is Anna and Kristoff's home. I placed it next to Olaf's cave and used the natural forming ice rocks to complement the build. I created a courtyard like fountain encircled by the frozen pillars. We also have a frozen seating area next to the fountain. Making our way to the Frosted Fortress, this is where I gave the illusion that it is high up in the clouds by using Olaf's cloud item. I added the snow family and an igloo to complete this small build. I also adore how the Frosted Fortress looks in the background of our next design, the ice rink. I created a cute, cozy area for skating, complete with a piano and sitting area. This build is really cute when transitioning from the steps in the forest. Next is our New Year's Eve build with the Ice Palace Premium Shop House. I created a very natural pathing design with the illuminated deer and snowflake items. Finally, let's head to the last build of the tour, my holiday market. I used the vine walls to create an enclosed courtyard for the holiday tree, and I also designed a hot cocoa stand and sitting area. Finally, we will stroll through the market where I also placed Goofy and Kristoff's stalls. I used the non-decorated haunted mansion for the building in this design. I very much adore clutter core and cottage core while staying practical. And I hope that you see that aesthetic throughout my valley. The hay bale in front of the door to the Haunted Mansion is not supposed to be there. I try to remove it on update day, but it was glitched, so we will pretend it is not there. That concludes my Disney Dreamlight Valley tour. Let me know in the comments which biome or builds in general are your favorite. I hope this video brought you inspo for your own valley. If you are interested, most of the speed builds are posted to my channel. You can find all of them under my Dreamlight Valley playlist if you are interested in recreating. If you enjoyed your time with me today, please consider liking this video, subscribing, and turning on notifications to see more designs. Additionally, all of my socials are posted in the description down below if you would like to check out some photography of my builds or join my Discord or official Facebook group. You can also consider becoming a channel member to further support the channel. I'd like to thank all of my channel members and those of you who are subscribed. You have cozied up on this journey with me in creating my valley. I appreciate you all so much. I hope you all enjoyed the tour of my valley and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day.